Okay, now to derive the equation, I'm just simply going to look at my phasor diagram. And here's what I'm going to do. Rather than going through all the formal derivation and everything, I'm just going to say I don't have this. So in an RL uh, circuit, I don't have the CBC. So I just have voltage of the resistor. I have the current. The current is going to be in phase with the voltage of the resistor. And I have voltage of the inductor. How do these add up, voltage of the resistor and the voltage of the inductor? They simply add up like a vector. You put this to the tip of that. So here's the voltage of the source. OK? And here's the phase angle, phi. OK? So I'm going to say uh, my uh, voltage of the resistor, voltage of the source, is going to equal voltage of the resistor squared plus voltage of the uh, inductor squared square root. Right? This is the magnitude. Magnitude of the voltage of the source. And then the voltage of the resistor is going to be uh, I R And then voltage of the inductor is going to be I X L. In other words, in this diagram, the amplitude of the vector is I X L. And then the amplitude of this vector is I R. Whichever one is bigger, you know, that's the one that's uh, going to be the longer one. So voltage of the source magnitude is going to be I comes out square root of R squared plus XL squared. And then the, ma uh, the voltage of the source magnitude is equal to V root mean square root 2. So the current that I, uh, the, the current amplitude is going to equal V root mean square Okay, this is the uh, I max. So whatever this thing is, it represents what the ammeter will measure, the effective current in the circuit. Okay, so this is, you can think of this as the total resistance of the circuit. Now the reason that, uh, the, because they're not in phase, you can't simply add the two resistors, R plus XL. They're not in phase. So you gotta do the the, the magnitude of the hypotenuse of the triangle formed by VR and VL. Okay, so what should the ammeter be measuring then? Ammeter measures I root mean square. So this is uh, 6.57 divided by square root of, okay? And now I could put here, uh, let's say I use a resistance of 100. And I could use the same XL as before, right? The, which was 2 pi FL. What was my XL? Since we're using the same numbers, I can use that same XL. So now let me set up the inductor and uh, capacitor in series. No, inductor and resistor in series here. I'm going to have the source going to the resistor. And I'm going to have the resistor going to the inductor. And then the inductor to the ammeter. Mm. 
me turn it off. Inductor to the I don't need this here. Okay. So what was my Excel? What? Four point three point six zero. So it's kind of slow, small compared to that, right? So the final current should probably be something like a 6.5, uh, This because this is going to be about 100. So 65, something like 65 milliamps. You know what I could do? Let me make the resistor a little smaller. Because I want to, this one kind of will not prove the square root nature of this, you know, because the 100 it dominates this. Let me make my external resistor something like uh, 10. Then it'll be better, because then this will be 10 squared. Yeah, I like that better. Then th we will know whether or not this formula is really working. Showing 55 milliamps right now. Are we close? Is that close to? Remember, the inductor has its own internal resistance, so is that we're not close? Uh, what is it? 0 0.62 amps. Oh, okay, so we got 620 milliamps. Huh. So again, the internal resistance of the inductor is coming to play. How about if we ha use the 100? So it's not really coming close, huh? How about if we use the 100? Then this would be closer to uh, 100. So it'll be uh, 65.7 milliamps. Let me try that. If I put a hundred, hold on. Oh, what did I, I, I had it on a, sorry, I had a resistance of a, I had it on a, a hundred. Now if I put a resistance of 10, it's 0.227. 0.227, is that closer? Oh, okay, it's still a little smaller. Now if I put it on 100, I get 54 milliamps. Okay, that's a little closer, right? The 100, because now the external resistor is dominating the circuit. So uh, it's a little closer to what's predicted. If I put it on 1,000, If I put it on 1,000, 6.4 milliamps. And 1,000, yeah, now it's closer to what, it should, what, it, what the theoretical should be. You see, it's making exactly good sense. Now, for now, I'm not going to hook up the oscilloscope because it's going to take time. I'm going to wait till we build up the whole theory, and we'll do the whole RLC circuit.